bit more of the old special stuff. But we don't need it because the float's gone again. <laughs> Fish on, look at this. It's mental. It is mental. They are in such a frenzy. Look at the bend in that. Welcome back to another episode of Bailiwick Fishing. Uh, if you enjoyed the last video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, subscribe button. That uh, helps out the video. Anyway, you'll notice today that I'm sat down. We're in a barn. You probably see some hay behind. That's from Sarah's horse. Well, what we're going to be making today. So you can guess. We've got a bucket. We've got a few mackerel. We've got some holy mackerel oil. We have got two loaves of bread. Two chins of tuna and a blender. Has anyone guessed? Because if you haven't guessed, what we're making is shervy. So I'm going to show you the process of how we make this, and this is going to be for our fishing tomorrow. We're going to be targeting longnose or garfish, which are basically a um, very small fish, can grow up to, well, a couple of pounds, and uh, we're going to target them with some float fishing. So first of all, I'll show you what we're going to do with the bread. I use white bread on this, but you can use whatever bread you want. I find it soaks up a bit more. And all we're going to be doing is, if I do it like this, is breaking up the bread into smaller bits, like so. Now, what you can do is roll it as well, like that. But what you're trying to achieve with Shervy is you don't want to uh, make it too thin that it doesn't go, but you don't want to make it too thick that it doesn't dissolve. Another thing with Shervy is you don't want to put too much because you don't want to feed the fish. You basically want to attract the fish. Um, so yeah, there's a fine line between that. Most people go mad and flick, 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 flick all the time. Um, that's not the case. You want to create a nice slick on the top of the water, but you want the shervy to go through the water column and uh, and basically attract the garfish. Now they usually feed around six foot, six to ten foot under the surface of the water, so that's the depth we're going to be running the float at, and hopefully we can try and keep things um, keep things well organised. I'll bring you back when we get a bit further. This is the first step. I've done the bread, so there's those two loaves of bread that are all completely done. Now, as I say, everyone makes shervy different, so if you've got your own way, then you can carry on, but for those of you that don't know how to make it, maybe this will help you. So the next thing I'm gonna do, <coughs> Sarah's having a sneezing fit okay. while she's holding the camera. Next thing I'm gonna do, oh, let's open the tin of uh, tuna, two tins of tuna. In there. Is this what you're making me for dinner tonight? Yeah, lovely concoction. <laughs> Look at that, the cat's around there, be having it. Beautiful. Next thing, so that's the, oh, we've missed a slice here. Look. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a splash of water, just like so. We'll give that a mix up in a sec. Some of the bigger bits of bread, you want to make it. Not too small, but it's just easier for the blender. So the next thing I'm going to do is chop some mackerel. And I'm going to chop it into smallish bits. There's a bit of a hard, mackerel's a bit, you know, there's a few bones, but we don't want to make it too hard for the blender. So we'll give it a bit of a chop up into chunks, like so. We're probably going to chop up, I reckon, six mackerel maybe. Heads, tails. The lot. These were frozen. These are the ones I, some of the ones I caught. And uh, these were frozen a while back. Got the, you got the gist. We're gonna cut all these up and I'll give you a show of the next step. Okay. Right, so that's what it looks like. Pretty disgusting, I know. So all the mackerels chopped up into first choice chunks. I'll put a price over the shop. So this is holy mackerel. Um, very good fish oil. You can use pilchard oil, pretty much anything. This stuff here um, is basically fatty acid stimulants, full of omega-3. Um, you should take some of them, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> it will attract basically any kind of 
um, fresh, you know, fish, congas, pretty much anything. Um, but yeah, great for the garfish. So I'm gonna have a good glug of this. So a big sludge, it's not the cheapest, but we're not scared to use it. So there's half a thing I've used in there, a bit more. What do you reckon to the smell? Can you smell that guys? Have a sniff. <laughs> smell it? Yeah, it just smells like fish oil. Yeah. Right, the next thing. Bit of water, mix in with that. Now you don't want to put too much. Now you can see, if you come in for a real close look, can you see the oil? floating on the surface. He's floating on the surface, a bit like when you cook the old slow cooker. Pretty disgusting, but anyway, that's all in. Now's the time for the blender. So you give it a blend up like this, full, full revs with the blender. Uh, it's gonna take a while, because obviously a lot of it's chunky, but we're gonna get there, and I'll show you the end product. Giving you a show of how it's going. You can see the blender's on its knees. It's really, really hard going for it. And uh, it's the bones of the fish. You can see it's starting to thicken up. Now, if you get to the end, we're nowhere near the end, but if you get to the end and it's still a bit runny, stick a bit more bread in it and it will thicken it up. Um, I'll be on the scavenger after for some more. So we no toast in the morning. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna keep going around like this. And uh, basically you want it like, um, almost like a, a pat. So you can basically, this is this would be no good. You, you need it a lot thicker than that. And we'll have it a lot thicker by the time it's all blended up and uh, the bread's binded it up. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. So as always predicted, the uh, mackerel skin gets all jammed around the... Uh, it's like hair. <laughs> around the propeller. And uh, basically I'm gonna cut it out. You can see how hot it's been getting because it's actually started to cook the skin. Anyway, we're gonna keep going. And uh, all this to catch some fish, but what a difference it does. There we go. Give it a clean out here. Right, we're going to the shop. There's no bread inside, so we'll see you back and uh, we'll get this finished. After that, it'll be the next day when you see this, we're gonna be back down to uh, a local mark. Just to let you know, this is the day before. When we get down there tomorrow, it's gonna be windy. So uh, be prepared. There might be a bit of noise. We're gonna be out the back of the van. I'll show you about how to show the up when we get down there. I'll show you the setup. We're gonna be using two float rods. So the two float rods, we've got mackerel and the other one I'm gonna use sand eel. So we'll see which one catches better. We'll see you down there. Well, I... <laughs> before we go, I was just cleaning up the blender, look. Anyway, I gave it up the rev up in the, uh, in the bucket here and it spat a load of the mackerel out the side of the blender and got Sarah in the face. <laughs> Is that nice? That's good for you. Nice face pack, yeah. That's yeah, good for you, face pack, mega three. Yeah. See you later, guys. <laughs> okay, well, welcome back. So I was originally gonna show you um, the footage, next footage you'd have seen would have been me down at the mark, but I thought I'd give you a show of the, uh, the setting up of the floats, because some of you won't have seen that. Um, so first things first, we're gonna go with the first rod I'm using, which is the, as you will all know, Pen Regiment 2. I like to use spinning rods for float fishing. Now the reason I use these is because they're nice light rods. Um, they give a good, you know, you get a good fight with a bit of action um, with these uh, garfish or mackerel or even bream if you're, you can get them on the float. And uh, I don't like to use anything too stiff. So I like to get as much of a fight as possible. And uh, it's really good sport. So with the reel I'm using today, um, we're gonna be using two reels today, one um, mid-range and the other one is cheap and it's old, but I've had it for a long, long time. And that is the Shimano Sienna 4000. Now, this reel, as you'll see, is a bit battered, few war wounds, bit of corrosion, bit of this, bit of that. Cost me 26 quid about four years ago and it was one of the best 26 quids I ever used or ever spent, shall we say. Now. This line's been on here for a little while. So, um, well, the line that had been on here, sorry, for a little while. So I've just changed that. Um, it's not always a good thing to use line that's been on a reel for a while. Sometimes it can become brittle or frayed. So I like to keep mine changed quite regularly. So I'm gonna put this, the cheaper one, on the Pen Regiment 2, which is the, well, the favorite rod of choice. And I'm simply gonna do the show you through the float setup. 
So first of all, you want to ensure that your, um, I hope the lights are right, ensure that your line is around the bail arm. Obviously what you do, simply feed all the line through the eyelets of the rods until you get there. Um, everyone knows how to do that, so I'll give you a show at the next step when we get there. Now, with float fishing, as you saw in the last video, or one of the last videos I did, it was a real nuisance with the um, not having the float stops. Now I left them at home, which was a pain, but today we're in the in the stable where all my fishing stuff is. You might notice behind this horse stuff, but that side it's full of fish and stuff, and I have the float stops. So I'll give you a show of them, and it's really important that you uh, you do these correctly. So these are the float stops I use. They are Icons rubber. Uh, float stops very strong and reliable tackable from icon so simply open the packet up and you'll see that there's like a little ring in here some of you will know all about this others won't and there they are there's the little float stops so you'll notice i don't know if the camera will pick this up there's little eyelets and what you do and i do this usually is i put the rod up on the side of the, uh, just put it like that. Hopefully you can see this. So the rod's up on the side and I like to find where the line is and I like to stretch out. Now for long nose, you want between six and eight foot. As the tide comes up, um, obviously you, you know, they're gonna be a little bit deeper. Um, so you, you know, you've got to allow for that. Now I've actually just noticed, you won't be able to see this on the camera, but I've just noticed on this new line, just feeding along there, it feels a bit frayed. So I'm actually gonna cut that off. And with long nosed fishing or garfish, they actually really fray your line with their beaks. So you need to be really careful. Um, and each time, well, almost each time you reel up, you need to be checking your trace. Because basically they've got like a scissor beak and they'll just keep cutting their way through your, and then in the end you lose fish. So anyway, get yourself, a six foot trace, so I usually do an arm's length, it's usually about five foot, and then I'll probably go eight foot this time. So there we go. And then all you simply do, hopefully you can see this, is put your line through one of the eyelets, okay? So just like that. And then you, you get hold, now I like to keep the, lubricate the line a little bit, and then you simply grab one of the little rubbers and pull it on to the line like that. And you'll see it's pulling through the two at the moment and then it'll simply slide onto the one. Now there you go. So at the moment, the float stop is here and it's about six inches away from the end of the line. So we're gonna slide that up all the way until we get to between six and eight foot. Um, keeping an eye and that is a brilliant float stop you know they will it will it will move you can move it but it will not move enough that it's um you know keeping the bait uh on the it will keep it exactly where it is now you need to keep an eye on your float depth because if your bait is too far on the bottom the float will simply do this you want your float like that you do not want your float like this because that means that the trace is on the bottom the ball weight is on the seabed and the float's just bobbing around. The idea of the float stop is when you cast out like that, the float will go Toop! and that's it. When you get long nose, Sarah's just walked in. So when you get long nose, the float does this and it can shoot under or it can do all this sort of business as you'll see in the last video or this video. Sarah's just come in. She's gonna give my, uh, my this is off my boat cover. So Sarah's gonna do some uh, repair work to it because it's got a hole in it. I don't want to put it on the boat because it's going to end up, the wind's going to catch it and it's going to rip. Do you think you can repair it? Hopefully. They are, hopefully. Anyway, I'll give you a show once we get this float set up. Onto the main line, first of all, after you've put the, uh, after you've put the float stop, you're going to go with a bead. Next, we're going to go with the float. As always, for people that don't know, the orange bit goes on the top of the surface. The B colours, it's up to you, whatever colour you want to use. So I've got a, um, so I've gone bead, float, bead. Next we're going to go for a one ounce 
ball weight through that i like to put another bead and that's just to protect the knot because obviously every time you cast the weight's going down on the line which is going onto the swivel so bead float bead one ounce weight ball weight another swivel and now we're going to go onto the trace i did have a trace around here but can't see it uh, there you go that's the size swivel i use so quite they're quite small and i'm going with a half blood knot which is through the eyelet of the swivel. Bring your tag end, twist four or five times. One, two, three, four, five. Lubricate the knot through the tag end. Now the trace, I want to say probably say around that. So, you know, good two, two and a half foot, but it's up to you. It's a cool recording, um, whatever you fancy. Uh, so the hook size I'm going to use today is going to be the next thing and these are the hooks I'm going to use so they're the Traboco, uh, Trabuco if you want to call them um, very high carbon steel hooks very very uh, strong and uh, yeah I think they're great so they're actually um, size one there's 15 hooks in this packet I'll give you a show they've got little they are barbed hooks for those of you that want to are interested and you can see how tiny that hook is. If I put it in my hand, the flat of my hand, and they're slightly curved. You see that? So that will, that has got a slight bend on it and nice barbs in the back of the hook to keep the bait on and also when, to keep the fish hooked on. <clears throat> okay, well, we've tried somewhere else because it just wasn't gonna work there. Um, I'm trying to keep out the wind. You can see it's pretty, uh, pretty misty and murky. Now the wind's coming from this way, so we're shouting behind the van. Anyway, here's the survey. This is perfect. Look, it's not watery, but it's not too thick, like a like a paste. And if any of you recognise one of these, I've got a dog. It's the old tennis ball thrower. So I'm going to give it a good load up like that, and I'll show you. Well, yeah, simple as you just flick it out like so, and check that. It's all flicked everywhere, and that's going to work its way through the water column and uh, hopefully get some fish. Now, what you don't want to do with this, as I said, is fling out too much because you do not want to feed the fish. Here we go again. The old seagull is going to be interested. You don't want to feed the fish. You want to attract them. You, I can see it working through all the water column. It's starting to go down. So with that oil slick, <laughs> the seagulls are well interested. With the oil slick, um, that will attract the garfish. They're after the bits of bread. So. Uh, yeah we're going to be attracting those so we'll give it a couple more scoops out i knew we were going to have them um but yeah we're going to attract them we're going to get the float out and we're going to hopefully get some fish but yeah not the best of days pretty murky so if you did skip to part two and you haven't watched part one these are the rods i'm going to be using it's the pen regiment two famous in my eyes because i use it so much we're going to be using little um, Trabuco hooks. There we go. You can see it's got that bend on it. Barbed on the back of the shank, barbed as well. Seagulls seem to be around. So this is the first rod we're going to be using and we're going to be using a cheaper reel today. There's Richard Keane there. You see him on a lot of the videos. Well, it's not actually him, but that's his boat, Sylvia K. With the float set up today, if you once again if you haven't watched the first part of the video fishing about well that's a tangle up there now six foot under um six foot underneath the rod well the rod length probably because the rod length is 11 foot so as good as six to 12 foot i suppose and we're using off the main line bead float bead one ounce weight bead swivel down to a trace and down to the hook i just talked to you about anyway i'm going to bait this one up and we're going to get this out all right Hopefully there's no water in the lens. As a standard with me, you know the score. We always bring the bait and it's always too late and frozen. So I'm going to be using an assort assortment of mackerel today. I've brought the old scallop frills um, just in case we put the bottom rods out. We might get them out here. I'll just see how mad the floats go. Obviously two float rods. If there's fish here, things could get a bit saucy. So uh, we shall see. They can go in there for now. We've got some sand eels. What I was going to try was one rod with sand eels on 
and the other rod with uh, a slither of mackerel so we can hopefully see which one works the best so we'll give that a go and uh, yeah as I say bad bad person, bad boy me so I should have put some uh, should have defrosted them I might go down the steps after and get a bucket fill that up with water as for the mackerel we'll just cut the slithers off but yeah I'm hoping we can attract some long nose. We're quite far in the harbour, but there's no reason why the uh, the structures shouldn't attract them. They like to hang around the uh, hang around the boats and around the structures. So uh, we're on a key here. So hopefully now <clears throat> everyone else does this differently. Um, I simply snap the sand deal off. As I say, it's a bit difficult with it being uh, still frozen. But I like to just tuck it through. So yeah, it's breaking up. Anyway tuck it through once or twice that should do it you can see that bait presentation there's a little bit of hook exposure but either way right i'm going to keep you on the chest harness you can watch me cast out you see the float there there's the depth i might go a little bit deeper than that for now just deepen that up a bit now the one thing we have got to make sure is is that there's boats coming out and obviously they are priority so if uh if our float's in the way, we will reel up, just to make that point clear. Right, here we go. Just a little flick out, just a little simple, simple like that. You don't need to go far. That's probably a little bit far to be fair. So we'll reel in a bit. You can see it's about, uh, and we're gonna just leave it just there. Now, Another thing today, you won't see it behind the mist, but there's a cruise ship out there. One of the tenders is, co tenders is coming in and I'll show you exactly where they're gonna be going. They're gonna be going, oh, the weather's yuck. Onto this pontoon here, waiting for this, the Princess Cruises, they're all gonna be coming to and fro, bringing people ashore. So uh, we need to keep an eye out for them. But yeah, that's the first float in the water, about six foot, that is on the sand deal. So we're gonna get the other one, this is the Savage Gear Rod. Um, I use this one for uh, the bass fishing as well. We're gonna get this one out. Same setup, different float. Um, this one's a non-branded make. The other one was a Shakespeare. Not that it makes any difference really. Same hook size, same weight, same this, same that, same line, different rod. This one's a Savage Gear Precision Law Cast Rod. Um, very, very accurate when you're bass fishing. So if you haven't got one, and uh, you're fishing places where there's a lot of reefs and stuff you can really get it exactly where you want it so uh here's a show of the rod sorry guys it's upside down savage gear sg4 precision rod it's nine foot six ten to 45 grams now obviously what you want to do is i said not put too much chevy out to start with but you do want to make sure it's keeping topped up because you want to keep the fish once you've got them here you want to keep them attracted this weather is dismal We'll be sat in the back of the van in a second once we get this out. <laughs> so you are, here's one of the tenders coming in now. That'll be full of people, full of them. Now, for the old mackerel, I'm just watching the float because but that's the one we've only just chucked out and it's already doing a bit of dancing. So whether or not it's the wind, I know that boat's just gone past, but there was a bit of a... I think there was a bit of an inquiry on that. So just as we're turning round, I will be keeping an eye. Anyway, for the mackerel, nice and small slithers. So as if you're filleting it, just like that, look at that. Just like that. And that's all I use, simply that, fill it. And we will hook it on as we did with the other ones. So once through and two and i might even go for a third one if i can go what do i do for you guys to, to get some video content i'm getting soaked number three right this one's ready to go lovely bait presentation back down a bit deeper with this one again and we're going to flick this just out there so we got one there hopefully they didn't move around too much i'm going to sit in the van guys We'll flick a bit more Shervy for the old, uh, to keep the interest. Of 
cool. You can see I'm flicking it in the whole area of where the floats are, that, the whole shebang. So we want to bring the fish in and that's it. Now we're going to move this and take shelter. You see my motorbikes in the back. This is my competition bike. So this is another sport I do, brand spanking new bike. Uh, yeah, and it's in the back because I had a competition last weekend. So we're going to take a seat now. Beautiful. Look at this, guys. Sat in the back of the back. Oh, float's gone, guys. Missed it. Come on. Gone, guys. Float's gone. Float's gone. Float's gone. Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Look at this. Mr. Garfish. Hopefully. Check this out. You can see it in the water, the silver tinge. Here she comes. Target species acquired. Look at that. Beautiful. So we're going to give him a quick flick up over the railings. He's only a baby one, this one. But fish is a fish, guys. Look at that. Baby big fishing back on the fish. Lovely job. Now, one thing with these is they flip and stink and they've got scales galore. And hopefully this one's not hooked too bad. But remember I said to you, those little teeth, can you see the teeth? Really spiny little teeth. And they will knacker your trace up big style. Um, so yeah, you need to be uh, need to be aware of that. We're just gonna unhook him. Oh la la la. We will be keeping him for bait because we need to stock up our freezer for the winter months. There we go. The first garfish. So he's gonna go in the tub. Ugh, look at that, yuck. Anyway, we're gonna get the other, get that bait up, get that back out. Lovely, good start. The same as last time, guys. The cast, there's the depth. So from here, the float stops. So again, perfect. We're gonna keep the thing the same now. We know the depth, quick cast, lovely job. Wait for the float to settle. That's it, settled now. And hopefully it won't be long before I can get you another one. The float's looking a bit suspect, guys. It's looking a bit suspect. It's going on its side a bit. There might be some acrobats here. You ready? The float's sneaking off sideways. Ah, fish on, fish on, fish on. Here we go again. Mr. Garfish, here he comes. Right guys, the rain has started and I've changed the float because it just, yeah, it wasn't working. But anyway, we're gonna, we've caught all the fish so far on the Pen Regiment 2, but I wanna catch one on this little Savage Gear rod so you can see it bent like a banana. So that's the next plan. <laughs> here we go. Right, so hopefully there's no rain on the lens. The Savage Gear rod is out. We're going to give a few flicks to the old Chevy, right in where the bait is. So I'm on the Savage gear now, I'm swapping to and fro. Which one? <laughs> the duo. Rod in each hand. Which one's going to go first? The other rod's gone. I'm missing bites because I'm mucking around with two float rods, that's the idea. Here we go again, which one's going to go? They are, oh, I missed him. <laughs> this is crazy. I've never done two float rods on solo. This is madness. Fish on, fish on, fish on. Woohoo! He's acrobatting this one. Oh, look at that, that's a better. Beautiful. Right, we'll just leave that there a second. This one we're gonna get a bit further out because we had to get it in for the for the uh, tender. I hope you're enjoying this video. Oh, it's only lightly hooked. This is a much better stamp of uh, long nose, this one. Oh, 
get this one baited out chuck it out flat out we are rain starting that's flat out we love it we love it so i'll cast this one to the left come on i want one on that rod More of the old special stuff. But we don't need it because the float's gone again. <laughs> Fish on, look at this. It's mental. It is mental. They are in such a frenzy. Look at the bend in that rod. The little garfish, they're mental. Absolutely mental. We've got them in such a frenzy. They just literally, you saw you saw me cast that out and it was not long hopefully fingers crossed we can go there's no reason why not why we can't get one on the savage gear they literally must be sat there with their beaks open ready to pounce on the shervy come on so once again we're gonna cast out the old floats we got a bite on the savage gear come on <laughs> come on oh we want one on this savage gear roll we want to see it like a banana just slam it go on the savage gear is gone fish on check the bend in that <laughs> i literally you saw me chucking the survey and the savage gear whoa is on lovely smashed it but it ain't no it ain't no long nose <laughs> hey it's another species bream look at that lovely black bream foul 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 to that i need to get that other rod in before it goes too far so we'll just put that down there second so that bream actually fell, uh, I thought it felt a bit different. That bream fell, uh, fell, fell to the, uh, to the sand eel. Obviously it was a bit hungry. Right guys, he changed the hooks. He knew the crack, whoa. That boat came out of nowhere. He knew the change, he changed the hooks and boom. What did I say? Oh, that's a nice bream. And we got ourselves a lovely, lovely bream. What a beauty. That shot down, that flat, that uh, float was smashed. Check that out. What a lovely bream. Lovely condition. Perfectly hit, hooked through there. Look at that. It's a lovely fish. Woo! Out of the van, guys, it's pouring. I'm there's there's uh water dripping off your <laughs> under my nose, so it's a bit of a black screen at the moment. Just have to hang on. Heavy showers, right? <laughs> well, I've just got back in the van. Sarah's just pulled up where I'm fishing, she's been an absolute legend. She's brought me a hot drink. I am literally dripping and fancy little cake so check that well it's been a good trip today obviously we had those garfish um and those two nice bream the, the rain's been on and off um that wind has really changed around to the east which they did say it would and uh yeah it was straight in at us wind quite force five winds i suppose the rain and uh, obviously the fishing is never as good when it's from the east so yeah that's why they switched off Right, so welcome back, I'm just home. So here's some of the bream that we've uh, we've caught, fine fish. Anyway, 
I'll show you how I um, descale them. But what you, what you do is they you literally just run the knife like that. I mean, I'll show you the other side first, so there you go. And literally, you're just scraping the scales away. One tip, top tip is um, if you do the scales and you do them underwater, you won't have the scales flicking up. I wouldn't advise that you do this in your kitchen, otherwise it's gonna be a heck of a mess. But we'll descale them, I'll show you how I fillet them, and then we'll show you how, we'll do a catch and cook with them a bit later on tonight. So uh, stay tuned. So for the descaling, uh, for the filleting, simply I'm putting the knife down the back of the fish's head, like so. And then I'm twisting the knife like that and feeling out where that that bone is, the backbone. And basically, what you want to do is run your knife uh, on that on the top of that bone. I think I might have gone a bit far there. Yeah, just a little bit far. So you want to get your And like, like that, you'll have a nice fillet. The next thing I do is hopefully you can see is I take the rib rib bones off, so just that bit there, take that off, and then you can cut down the middle like in a V notch, and that means you'll take all those pin bones out there. You can do them with tweezers, but yeah, I don't do that. Uh, the next thing is I do the other side of the fish, and then uh, yeah, be all ready for uh, cleaning under the tap, and then uh, we'll season it. A bit later on okay well welcome back we're back in the kitchen uh i hope you enjoyed the rainy session with the uh float vision but anyway we're going to give you a simple thing i filleted those uh bream so there we go there's four um fillets pin bones a lot we're going to go with a simple usually i'll cook with like a garlic or a um you know something like that which is you can sometimes overpower it, but I'm simply going to keep it as simple as anything. So I'm going to put a bit of oil in. Yes, that's the wrong oil, but that's all we've got. A bit of salt and a bit of pepper. That's as simple as it's going to go. So first of all, I'm going to put some oil in the pan. Get that warm. Now, a tip for this is make sure you cook skin, skin upwards. Is that the same as mackerel? Correct. If you cook it with the skin and down in the pan, it will all shrivel up, it'll be no good. So with these mackerel, not mackerel. <laughs> you were talking about mackerel, see? With these bream, first thing I'm gonna do, this is a bit of a pink Himalayan salt. Just gonna give it a quick, we're not gonna go too mad with the old salt, because obviously they're from the sea. And then just a bit of pepper. Not too much, but as I say, we don't wanna overpower these because we wanna just taste the raw, well, not raw, but the uh, the fish. We don't want to spoil it. So that's that, hot oil. What did I say? Not that way, but that way. So you can see, I've all, I've actually descaled it as well. So there's no scales on the fish. So what you want to do is cook it this way for about, what? Well, four or five minutes and then give it a flip, but make sure that the, the meat and the flesh is cooked through and uh, then it won't, then it will not shrivel up. See that lovely white meat cooking away? That shriveled because I took a pound of cheese cook. Get rid of that bone. This isn't far done. Okay, well that's the finished product there, so you can see them on the plate. Just a nice bit of crisp. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tuck into this. So if you've liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the button on the bottom. Make sure it goes grey. That will give you all the notifications for the of the next video. Check out my Facebook page. Check out the Instagram. And uh, yeah, if there's anyone else that you think might be interested, give them a share of the page, and I'm sure they won't be disappointed. See you next time. Hmm.